Okay, so this is about 4.3, which is about um, <clears throat> sort of visualizing graphs, knowing information about the derivative. Um, <clears throat> so by now, I think we know how, what the derivative has to do with increasing and decreasing. Um, increasing means... The first derivative is positive, um, and, and visually that just means that if you look at the graph, if you move your eyes from left to right, you're moving up. It, it goes up and to the right. Um, <clears throat> this would also be increasing. Um, decreasing is moving down and to the right. So this is decreasing and this is decreasing. Um, in this section, we're also going to talk about concavity. Concavity is a little bit more subtle visually. Concavity is about the second derivative. This one is concave up. Concave up means, in terms of the derivative, that the second derivative is positive. Concave down means the second derivative is negative. Uh, but let me point at this picture for a second and just, like, try to help you visualize what, why it looks like this. Um, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. Um, <clears throat> we know that if, if the derivative of something is positive, then it's increasing. So if the derivative of the derivative is positive, that means the derivative is increasing. So, so if the second derivative is positive, that means the first derivative is increasing. What does it mean for the first derivative to be increasing? Well, the first derivative is the slope of the tangent line. And to be increasing, that should be getting bigger as I move from left to right. And as you can see, if I draw a tangent line, say, here... Draw it a little bit better and then I draw another tangent line, say, here, the slope of this tangent line is larger than the slope of this tangent line. This is a steeper line. It's moving up faster than this line. Um, so as I move from left to right, the derivative has increased. The, the derivative here is a larger number than the derivative here because the slope of this line is larger than the slope of this line. Um, <clears throat> so that's what concave up means. That, that means, at least if you're increasing, that then the slope of the tangent line is getting steeper and steeper going up. Um, concave down means the opposite. Concave down means... Um, second derivative is negative, and you can see the opposite happening. This is still increasing. I'm, as, I, as I move from left to right, I, I'm going upwards, but if I draw a tangent line here, this one is actually steeper than if I draw a tangent line here. All right, the slope of this one is larger than the slope of this one. <clears throat> so this is what it looks like to be increasing and concave up. This is increasing and concave down. <clears throat> you can also be decreasing and concave up. So again, I'm, I'm, it's, it's decreasing because as I move from left to right, I'm going down. But this is concave up, and this is... So let's try not to trick ourselves by the fact that these are negative slopes. These tangent lines have negative slopes. But as a negative number, this slope is larger than this slope. Um, right? This one, I mean, I guess you could say that this one is, like, steeper. It, it's closer to being vertical. But for, for a negative slope, that, that means that this one is smaller than this one. So, so the slope is increasing. It, it was negative here, and it's less negative here. <clears throat> Similarly here, it's, you know, I can draw my two tangent lines. This one here has a, has a, the slope of this is less than the slope of this. They're both negative numbers, but this one is less than this one. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's what these pictures look like. For maybe a realer example, here's the graph of y equals x cubed. Um, it is increasing all the way, but it is concave down for this part. So let me write this. It's increasing for all x. It's concave down here, right? This looks like, I mean, it's, it looks like this picture. It's on its way up, but it's concave down. Um, but then here, it starts being concave up. Um, <clears throat> there's a name for a point this is called an inflection point it's where it changes concavity it was concave down all the way up to zero and then concave up after zero so if it, if it changes from concave down to up or up to down we call that an inflection point um, <clears throat> This one I'll talk about real quick. This is just x cubed minus x. This one is, it's increasing up to here, and then it's decreasing for a little while, and then it's increasing again. So it has a more complicated pattern of like increasing and then decreasing and then increasing again. Um, it is concave down up until this point and then it becomes concave up. So this is again a, a point of inflection. Um, yeah, so let me also talk about the, the first and second derivative tests. These are tests for identifying local maxes and local mins. Um, so the first derivative test is if you find a critical number and the function is increasing for values of x smaller than c, and then it's decreasing for values of x larger than c, then it's a local max. So think about this picture. We have c, which is a critical number, right? This would be a horizontal tangent line at c. That makes it a critical number. And this is increasing for values of x smaller than c and then it's decreasing for values of x larger than c. So what that means is, if it's increasing, it's getting bigger and bigger, and then it hits c, and then after that it gets smaller, then c must be a high point, right? If it was moving up, and then it hit this point, and then it started moving down, that's what a local max looks like. Um, on the other hand, if it's the other way around, like it's it's decreasing for values of x smaller than c and then increasing for values of x larger than c, then it's a picture that looks like this. It's decreasing and then we hit c and then it starts increasing and that's what a local min looks like. This is a low point. Um, yeah, so it's, it's easy for me to remember the first derivative test because I'm just like, <clears throat> if you're increasing, you're, you, you're on your way up and then you're, you hit your critical point, and then you're on your way down. And if I move my hand like this, it, it really, I see the picture where I, what I'm doing is I'm hitting a high point. The other way around is if I'm decreasing and I'm, I'm on my way down, and then I'm increasing, then I, I see that I'm hitting a low point. Um, <clears throat> for the second derivative test, uh, you have a critical number and you look at the second derivative. If the second derivative is negative, you have a local max. So let's think about why that is. This is a picture of what a local max looks like. And, well, this looks concave down. Um, Right, like the derivative, in fact, the derivative is positive here, and then it's zero here, and then it's negative here. So that, so that the derivative is decreasing, meaning that the, 
the first derivative is decreasing, meaning the second derivative is negative. And then the other way around for f for local mins. If, if the second derivative is positive, then it's a local min. <clears throat> this one can be a little bit tricky to remember. I mean, people might think that being negative should be a min and being positive should be a max, but it's the other way around. <clears throat> so let's do an example where we identify a bunch of this stuff. And I forgot to actually write the example, but here it is. Say we have this function. And I want to identify a bunch of things. The intervals where it's increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, identify any local extrema, and identify any inflection points. Um, what my goal here should be I want to draw two number lines one for f prime and one for f double prime and basically I want to fill in I want to mark any points where it's zero and then in between the points where it's zero, I want to figure out whether it's positive or negative. And, and I'm, I want to do that also for f double prime. And once I do that, that should tell me everything I need to know. Um, so let's start doing that. First, I'll do the first derivative. f prime of x is 1 minus 1 over x. Right? Now... I'm going to have to work with this, so let me simplify it. I'd like to get a common denominator. So the 1 is x over x, so I get x minus 1 over x. Uh, so first of all, I want to find the critical numbers. Um, so I set this equal to 0. And then I can multiply both sides by x. So I just get x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1. Now, I should also, f I should really find all critical numbers. So actually I should find where it's undefined as well. Uh, this one is undefined at x equals 0. However, let's think. Um, the domain of the original function matters. Uh, the original function has a natural log in it, and you, you can only do the natural log of a positive number. You can't do a natural log of a negative, and you can't do a natural log of 0. So actually, 0 is not even in the domain. In fact, let me mark 0 here. Um, I'm not going to do anything. I, 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 this number line, I'm not going to put any information to the left of 0. To the left of 0 is outside of the domain. In fact, even 0 itself is outside of the domain. Um, but I'm going to mark 0 because that's like where this stops. So I'm not, I'm not going to bother with anything to the left of 0. And by the way, I might as well do that here too. I don't even know what the second derivative is yet, but I know I'm not going to care about anything to the left of zero. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, so now I would like to fill in each interval with the exception of the part that's not in the domain. With the exception of that, I'm going to fill in each interval with just a positive sign or a negative sign just indicating whether the, deriv the first derivative is positive or negative. Um, so, and, and this is just plugging in numbers. Like we, we can just say, you know, when x equals a half, for example, I just chose a number between 0 and 1, what, what is f, f prime of x? Um, 
it would be negative a half over a half, so it would be negative one. So that's negative. <clears throat> okay. And then for x bigger than one, I can choose a number as well. How about two? If I plug in two, I'm going to get uh, one half, which is a positive number. Yeah. So I can answer some of my questions off of just this. I can tell where the function is increasing and decreasing, and I can identify local extrema. So when the first derivative is negative, it's decre the original function is decreasing. When the first derivative is positive, the original function is increasing. So here is where f is increasing. Decreasing would be this part. Um, <clears throat> and now let's do local extrema. Now remember the first derivative test, meaning if, if, it's, if you're increasing and then you hit a critical point and then you're decreasing, that's a max. If you're decreasing and then increasing, that's a min. It looks like here at, at 1, we were decreasing and then increasing. So a local min at x equals 1 and the, the value is uh, natural log of 1 is 0, so the value is 1. We did not find any local max. I, I don't see, like if, if this was increasing and then it started decreasing again, then wherever it started decreasing again, that would be a local max because it would have increased and then decreased. But that doesn't happen. This, this, once I hit one, then it's just increasing forever. Okay, so let's do the second derivative stuff. Um, Well, let's see. Actually, since...